The Sultanate of Sulu, Tausug, Kasultanan Sin Sug, Jawi, Kastan Suo Dar Alaslam Malay, Kesultanan Sulu, Arabic, Slauntan Swilk was a Muslim state that ruled the islands in the Sulu archipelago, parts of Mindanao, certain portions of Palawan and northeastern Borneo, present-day the certain parts of Sabah and North Kalimantan. The Sultanate was founded on 17 November 1405, by a Johor-born explorer and religious scholar Sharif ul Hashim, Paduka Mahasari Maulana al-Sultan Sharif ul Hashim became his full regnal name, Sharif ul Hashim is his abbreviated name. He settled in Buanza, Sulu. After the marriage of Abu Bakr and a local Diang Diang, Princess Paramisuli, he founded the Sultanate. The Sultanate gained its independence from the Bruneian Empire in 1578. At its peak, it stretched over the islands that bordered the western peninsula of Mindanao in the east to Palawan in the north. It also covers the area in northeastern side of Borneo, stretching from Marudu Bay to Tepian Durian in present day Kalimantan. While another source stated the area stretching from Kamanis Bay, which also overlaps with the boundaries of the Bruneian Sultanate. Due to the arrival of Western powers such as the Spanish, British, Dutch, French, German and American, the Sultan Thalassocracy and sovereign political powers were relinquished by 1915 through an agreement that was signed with the last colonialist, the United States. In 1962, Philippine government under the leadership of President Diosdado Macapagal officially recognized the continued existence of the Sultanate of Sulu. On 24 May 1974, Sultan Muhammad Mahaku de Kiram, reigned 1974-1986, was the last officially recognized Sulu Sultan in the Philippines, having been recognized by President Ferdinand Marcos. On 15 August 1974 Sultan Mo. Mahaku de A. Kiram submitted the organizational structure of the Sultanate of Sulu to the President of Philippines. The above-named structure confirmed that Mujul Lail Tan Kiram was the Raja Muda Crown Prince of Sulu. Under Rodrigo Duterte's administration, calls to finally settle the dispute of who is the officially recognized Sultan of Sulu via government recognition through an executive order was voiced out by various parties involved with the issue. The calls have yet to be dealt with by the government since 2017, along with a 2016 electoral promise to retake Eastern Sabah. In 2016, for the first time in history, the five contesting sultans of Sulu, Sultan Ibrahim Bajan, Sultan Muizuddin Jainal Bajan, Sultan Mujul Lail Tan Kiram, Sultan Muhammad Venazar Jilkarnain Jainal Abaran, and Sultan Fugdalan Kiram signed a covenant in an unprecedented move aimed at consolidating and strengthening the Sultanate's unity. The ceremony was held in Zamboanga City and was attended by hundreds of supporters and members of the different royal houses of the Sultanate of Sulu, and religious leaders and representatives of various sectors, including those from mainland Mindanao. In May 9, 2018, all five Sultans of the Sultanate and their supporters converged again in Zamboanga City in support of the establishment of the Zambasulta federal state through a federal form of Philippine government. The event was officially declared as the Bangsa Sug Consensus. History Pre-establishment The present area of the Sultanate of Sulu was once under the influence of the Bruneian Empire before it gained its own independence in 1578. Later, the earliest known settlement in this area is soon to be occupied by the Sultanate who was in Mainbing, Jolo. During these times, Sulu was called Lupa Sug. The Principality of Mainbing, populated by Buranan people, or Budanan, literally means, mountain dwellers, was first ruled by a certain Raja who assumed the title Raja Sipad the Older. According to Mahul, the origins of the title Raja Sipad originated from the Hindu Shri Pada, which symbolizes authority. The Principality was instituted and governed using the system of Rajas. Sipad the Older was succeeded by Sipad the Younger. During the reign of Sipad the Younger, a mystic named Tuan Mashaika arrived in Jolo in 1280 AD. Little is known to the origins and early biography of Tuan Mashaika, except that he is a Muslim who came from foreign lands at the head of a fleet of Muslim traders, or he was issued from a stock of bamboo and was considered a prophet, thus well respected by the people. Other reports, however, insisted that Tuan Mashaika together with his parents, Jamian Kalisa and Indra Shuga, were sent to Sulu by Alexander the Great, who is known as Iskander Zilkarnain in Malay annals. 
However, Salibi dismisses this claim by concluding that Jamian Kalisa and Indra Shuga were mythical names. According to Tarsila, during the coming of Tuan Mashaika, the people of Mainbing worshipped tombs and stones of any kind. After he preached Islam in the area, he married Sipad the Younger. S. daughter, Idda Indira Shuga and bore three children, Tuan Hakim, Tuan Pam and Aisha. Tuan Hakim, in turn, begot five children. From the genealogy of Tuan Mashaika, another titular system of aristocracy called Tuanship started in Sulu. Apart from the Idda Indira Shuga, Tuan Mashaika also married into another unidentified woman and begot Mumin. Tuan Mashaika died in 710 AH, equivalent to 1310 AD, and was buried in Bud Dato near Jolo, with an inscription of Tuan Makbalu, a descendant of Tuan Mashaika named Tuan May also begot a son named Datu Tka. The descendants of Tuan May did not assume the title Tuan, instead, they started to use Datu. It is the first time Datu was used as a political institution. During the coming of Tuan Mashaika, the Tagamaha people, literally means, the party of the people, coming from Basilan and several places in Mindanao, also arrived and settled in Buanza. After the Tagamaha came the Baklaya people, which means, seashore dwellers, believed to be originated from Sulawesi, and settled in Patikal. After these came the Baju people, or Samal, from Johor. The Baju were accidentally driven towards Sulu by a heavy monsoon, some of them to the shores of Brunei and others to Mindanao. The population of Buranan, Tagamaha, and Baklaya in Sulu created three parties with distinct system of government and subjects. In 1369, the Sulus attacked Majapahit and its province Poni, Brunei, looting it of treasure and gold. A fleet from Majapahit succeeded in driving away the Sulus, but Poni was left weaker after the attack. By 1390 AD, Raja Baguinda Ali, a prince of the Pagarian kingdom arrived at Sulu and married into the local nobility. At least in 1417, according to Chinese annals, three kings or monarchs ruled three civilized kingdoms in the island. Patuka Pahala Paduka Batara, ruled the eastern kingdom, he was the most powerful, the west kingdom was ruled by Mahalachi, Maharaja Kamal Ud Din, and the kingdom near the cave, or cave king, was Paduka Pachalapak. The Baju settlers were distributed among the three kingdoms. Mumin's descendants, the son of Tuan Mashaika, populated Sulu. After some time, a certain Timwe Arankaya Su. Il was mentioned by the second page of Tarsila, that he received four Basaya slaves people from the Kadatuan of Madhya as from Manila, presumably Kingdom of Manila, as a sign of friendship between the two countries. The descendants of Timwe Arankaya Su. Il then inherited the title Timwe, which means chief. On Tarsila's third page, it accounts the fact that the slaves were the ancestors of the inhabitants in the island to Parang, Lati, Gi, Tung, and Lu, UK respectively. The fourth page then narrates the coming of the Buranan, addressed in the Tarsila as the Mainbing people, Tagamaha, Baklaya, then the drifted Baju immigrants from Johor. The condition of Sulu before the arrival of Islam can be summarized as such, the island was inhabited by several cultures, and was reigned over by three independent kingdoms ruled by the Buranan, Tagamaha, and Baklaya peoples. Likewise, the socio-political systems of these kingdoms were characterized by several distinct institutions, Rajaship, Dataship, Tuanship and Timwayship. The arrival of Tuan Mashaika afterwards established a core Islamic community in the island. Islamization and establishment At the end of the 14th century, a notable Arab judge and religious scholar named Karim ul Makdam from Mecca arrived in the Malacca Sultanate. He preached Islam to the people, and thus many citizens, including the ruler of Malacca, converted to Islam. Chinese Muslims, Arabs, Persians, Malays, and Indian Muslims introduced Sulu and other Muslim sultanates to Islam. Chinese Muslim merchants participated in the local commerce, and the Sultanate had diplomatic relations with China during the time of the Ming Dynasty 1368 being involved in the tribute system. The Sulu leader Paduka Pahala and his sons moved to China, where he died, and Chinese Muslims brought up his sons in Dezhou, where their descendants live and have the surnames and and when, in 1380 AD, Karim ul-Makdam arrived in Simonal Island from Malacca, again with Arab traders. 
Apart from being a scholar, he operated as a trader. Some see him as a Sufi missionary originating from Mecca. He preached Islam in the area, and was thus accepted by the core Muslim community. He was the second person who preached Islam in the area, following Tuan Mashaika. To facilitate easy conversion of non-believers, he established a mosque in Tubig Indagan, Simonal, which became the first Islamic temple to be constructed in the area, as well as the first in the Philippines. This later became known as Sheikh Karamal Magdam Mosque. He died in Sulu, though the exact location of his grave is unknown. In Buanza, he was known as Tuan Sharif Alia. On his alleged grave in Buda Gad, Jolo, an inscription was written as Mohadam Aminala al Nikad. In Lugas, he is referred to Abdurrahman. In Sabutu, he is known to as his name. The different of beliefs on his grave locations came about due to the fact that Karim ul Makdam traveled to several islands in Sulu Sea to preach Islam. In many places in the archipelago, he was beloved. It is said that the people of Tapal built a mosque honoring him and that they claim descent from Karim ul Makdam. Thus, the success of Karim ul Makdam of spreading Islam in Sulu threw a new light in Islamic history in the Philippines. The customs, beliefs and political laws of the people changed and customized to adopt the Islamic tradition. Maritime power The Sultanate of Sulu became notorious for its so-called Moro raids, or acts of piracy directed towards Spanish settlements in the Visayan areas with the aim of capturing slaves and other goods from these coastal towns. The Tausug pirates used boats known as proas which varied in design and were much lighter than the Spanish galleons and could easily outsail these ships, they often carried large swivel guns or lantaka and also carried a crew of pirates from different ethnic groups throughout Sulu such as Iranams, Bajaus and Tausugs alike. By the 18th century, the Sulu pirates had become the virtual masters of the Sulu seas and the surrounding areas, wreaking havoc on Spanish settlements. This prompted the Spaniards to build a number of fortifications across the Visayan islands of Cebu and Bohol, churches were built on higher ground and watchtowers were built along coastlines to warn of impending raids. The maritime supremacy of Sulu wasn't directly controlled by the Sultan, independent Datus and warlords waged their own wars against the Spaniards and even with the capture of Jolo on numerous occasions by the Spaniards, other settlements like Maimbing, Banguingui and Tawi Tawi were used as assembly areas and hideouts for pirates. The Sultanate's control over the Sulu Seas was at its height around the late 17th to early 18th centuries where Moro raids became very common for the Visayans and Spaniards. In Sulu and in the Mindanao interior, the slave trade flourished and majority of these slaves that were being imported and exported were of Visaya ethnicity. The term, Visaya, eventually became synonymous to slave in these areas. Its maritime supremacy over the Spaniards, at the time, the Spaniards acquired steam-powered ships that began to curb Muslim piracy in the region. The Moro piratical raids began to decrease in number until Governor Narciso Claveria launched the Balanguingui expedition to crush the pirate settlements there, effectively ending the Moro pirate raids. By the last quarter of the 19th century, Moro pirates had virtually disappeared and the maritime influence of the Sultanate became dependent on the Chinese junk trade. Spanish and British annexations In the 18th century, Sulu's dominion covered most of northeastern part of Borneo. However areas like Tempasic and Abai had never really shown much allegiance to its earlier ruler, Brunei. Subsequently similar treatment was given to Sulu. Dalrymple who made a treaty of allegiance in 1761 with Sulu, had to make a similar agreement with the rulers of Tempasic and Abai on the North Borneo coast in 1762. Sultanate of Sulu totally gave up its rule over Palawan to Spain in 1705 and Basilan to Spain in 1762. The territory ceded to Sulu by Brunei initially stretched south to Tapian Durian, now Tanjong Mankaliat. Another source mentioned the southernmost boundary is at Dumaring, near the Straits of Makassar, now Kalimantan. However, by 1800 to 1850, these area had been effectively controlled by the Sultanate of Bulungan in Kalimantan, reducing the boundary of Sulu to a cape named Batu Tanagat and Tawau River. In 1848 and 1851, the Spanish launched attacks on Balanguingui and Jolo respectively. 
A peace treaty was signed on 30 April 1851 in which the Sultan could only regain its capital if Sulu and its dependencies became a part of the Philippine Islands under the sovereignty of Spain. There were different understandings of this treaty, in which although the Spanish interpreted it as the Sultan accepted Spanish sovereignty over Sulu and Tawi-Tawi, however the Sultan took it as a friendly treaty amongst equals. These areas were only partially controlled by the Spanish and their power was limited to only military stations and garrisons and pockets of civilian settlements. This lasted until they had to abandon the region as a consequence of their defeat in the Spanish-American War. On the 22nd of January 1878, an agreement was signed between the Sultanate of Sulu and British commercial syndicate, Alfred Dent and Baron de Overbeck, which stipulated that North Borneo was either ceded or leased, depending on translation used, to the British syndicate in return for payment of 5,000 Malayan dollar per year. On the 22nd of April 1903, Sultan Jamalul Kiram signed a document known as Confirmation of Cession of Certain Islands in which he granted and ceded additional islands in the neighborhood of the mainland of North Borneo from Bangji Island to Sibuku Bay to British North Borneo Company. The sum $5,000 a year payable every year increased to $5,300 a year payable every year. Madrid Protocol The Sulu Sultanate later came under the control of Spain in Manila. In 1885, Great Britain, Germany and Spain signed the Madrid Protocol to cement Spanish influence over the islands of the Philippines. In the same agreement, Spain relinquished all claim to North Borneo which had belonged to the Sultanate in the past to the British government. The Spanish government renounces, as far as regards the British government, all claims of sovereignty over the territories of the continent of Borneo, which belong, or which have belonged in the past to the Sultan of Sulu, Jolo, and which comprise the neighboring islands of Balambongan, Bangi, and Malawali, as well as all those comprised within a zone of three maritime leagues from the coast, and which form part of the territories administered by the company styled the British North Borneo Company. Decline The Sultanate's political power was relinquished in March 1915 after American commanders negotiated with Sultan Jamal Kiram on behalf of then Governor General Francis Burton Harrison. An agreement was subsequently signed and was called as the Carpenter Agreement. By this agreement, the Sultan relinquished all political power over territory within the Philippines except for certain specific land granted to Sultan Jamal al-Kiram and his heirs, with the religious authority as head of Islam in Sulu. However, the United States-based government refused to intervene in the North Borneo dispute see below, officially maintaining a neutral stance on the matter and continuing to recognize Sabah as part of Malaysia. On 24 May 1974 Muhammad Mahakuta Kiram, under Memo Order 427, which was issued by Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos. Memo Order 427 states that, The government has always recognized the Sultanate of Sulu as the legitimate claimant to the historical territories of the Republic of Philippines. The province of Sulu hosted the Daru Jambangan, Palace of Flowers, which was the royal palace of the Sultan of Sulu since historical times. The palace, located in Mainbang was made of wood, and was destroyed in 1932 by a huge storm. Today, a few arches and posts remain from the once grand palace complex. Many members of the royal family advocated for the reconstruction of the palace, and even its enlargement, however, the government of the Philippines has yet to establish a position or a fund for the matter. North Borneo Dispute The dispute is based on a territorial claim by the Philippines since the era of President Diosdado Macapagal over much of the eastern part of Sabah in Malaysia. Sabah was known as North Borneo prior to the formation of the Malaysian Federation in 1963. The Philippines, via the heritage of the Sultanate of Sulu, claimed Sabah on the basis that Sabah was only leased to the British North Borneo Company with the Sultanate's sovereignty never being relinquished. The dispute stems from the difference in the interpretation used on an agreement signed between Sultanate of Sulu and the British commercial syndicate, Alfred Dent and Baron von Overbeck, in 1878, which stipulated that North Borneo was either ceded or leased, depending on translation used, to the British chartered company in return for payment of $5,000 per year. Malaysia views the dispute as a non-issue. 
as it not only considers the agreement in 1878 as one of session, but it also deems that the residents had exercised their act of self-determination when they joined to form the Malaysian Federation in 1963. As reported by the Secretary General of the United Nations, the independence of North Borneo was brought about as the result of the expressed wish of the majority of the people of the territory as supported by the findings of the Kabold Commission. Moreover, a later 1903 agreement between Sultan of Sulu and the British government, has provided reaffirmation regarding the understanding of the Sultan of Sulu on the treaty in 1878, i.e. it is of the form of a session. However, it is acknowledged that the British never paid such compensation to the Sultanate of Sulu but during a meeting of Mafilindo between the Philippine, Malayan and Indonesian governments in 1963, the Philippine government said the Sultan of Sulu wanted the payment of 5,000 from the Malaysian government. The first Malaysian Prime Minister at the time, Tunku Abdul Rahman said he would go back to Kuala Lumpur and get on the request. Since then, the Malaysian Embassy in the Philippines issues a check in the amount of Erm 5,300, approximately, 77,000 pesos or $1,710, to the legal counsel of the heirs of the Sultan of Sulu. Malaysia considers the settlement an annual session payment for the disputed state, while the Sultan S. Descendants consider it rent. Republic Act 5446 in the Philippines, which took effect on 18 September 1968, regards Sabah as a territory over which the Republic of the Philippines has acquired dominion and sovereignty. On 16 July 2011, the Supreme Court ruled that the Philippine claim over Sabah is retained and may be pursued in the future. To date, Malaysia maintains that the Sabah claim is a non-issue and non-negotiable, thereby rejecting any calls from the Philippines to resolve the matter in ICJ. Sabah authorities seize the claim made by the Philippines. Moral leader Nur Miswari to take Sabah to International Court of Justice ICJ, as a non-issue and thus dismissed the claim. Covenant Age in 2016, for the first time in history, the five contesting sultans of Sulu, Sultan Mujol Lail Tan Kiram, Sultan Ibrahim Bajan, Sultan Muizuddin Jainal Bajan, Sultan Muhammad Venazar Jalkarnain Jainal Abaran, and Sultan Fugdalan Kiram signed a covenant in an unprecedented move aimed at consolidating and strengthening the Sultanate's unity. The ceremony was held in Zamboanga City and was attended by hundreds of supporters and members of the different royal houses of the Sultanate of Sulu, and religious leaders and representatives of various sectors, including those from mainland Mindanao. In May 9, 2018, all five sultans of the Sultanate and their supporters converged again in Zamboanga City in support of the establishment of the Zambasulta federal state through a federal form of Philippine government. The event was officially declared as the Bangsa Sug Consensus. Economy Weapons and slave trade Chinese who lived in Sulu ran guns across a Spanish blockade to supply the Moro Datus and Sultanates with weapons to fight the Spanish, who were engaging in a campaign to subjugate the Moro Sultanates on Mindanao. A trade involving the Moros selling slaves and other goods in exchange for guns developed. The Chinese had entered the economy of the Sultanate, taking almost total control of the Sultanate's economies in Mindanao and dominating the markets. Though the Sultans did not like one group of people exercising exclusive control over the economy, they did business with them. The Chinese set up a trading network between Singapore, Zamboanga, Jolo and Sulu. The Chinese sold small arms like Enfield and Spencer rifles to the Buayan Datu Uto. They were used to battle the Spanish invasion of Buayan. The Datu paid for the weapons in slaves. The population of Chinese in Mindanao in the 1880s was 1,000. The Chinese ran guns across a Spanish blockade to sell to Mindanao Moros. The purchases of these weapons were paid for by the Moros in slaves in addition to other goods. The main group of people selling guns were the Chinese in Sulu. The Chinese took control of the economy and used steamers to ship goods for exporting and importing. Opium, ivory, textiles, and crockery were among the other goods which the Chinese sold. The Chinese on Mainbing sent the weapons to the Sulu Sultanate, who used them to battle the Spanish and resist their attacks. A Chinese mestizo was one of the Sultan's brothers-in-law. The Sultan was married to his sister. 
He and the Sultan both owned shares in the ship named the Far East, which helped smuggle the weapons. The Spanish launched a surprise offensive under Colonel Juan Arolas in April 1887 by attacking the Sultanate's capital at Mainbing in an effort to crush resistance. Weapons were captured and the property of the Chinese were destroyed while the Chinese were deported to Jolo. Pearling industry After the destruction of the pirate haunts of Balanguangui effectively ending the centuries of slave raids, which the Sulu Sultanate's economy had so depended on, along with the economy of mainland Mindanao, the Sultanate S economy experienced a sharp decline as slaves became more inaccessible and the islands. Agricultural produce WASN. T enough, thus it became dependent on the Mindanao interior even for rice and produce. The Spaniards thought they had dealt the death blow for the Sultanate when they captured Jolo in 1876, rather, the Sultanate. S capital and economic and trading hub was moved to Mainbing on the other side of the island. Up until the American occupation, this was the residence and economic center of Sulu. This is where the Sultan Jamalul Kiram II and his advisor Haji Butu began the Sulu pearling industry to increase the Sultan's wealth. They organized the Sulu pearling fleet. The Sultan's pearling fleet was active way into the early 20th century, when in 1910, the Sultan reportedly sold a single giant pearl in London for $100,000. Culture Social class system Among the people of Sultanate of Sulu, the title of nobility could be acquired only by lineage, a closed system, whereby the titled persons inherit their offices of powers and prestige. There are two main social classes in Royal Sultanate of Sulu. Datu, Su Sultanan, which is acquired purely by lineage to the Sultanate. Whereas, all male members of the Royal House of Sulu should hold this hereditary title and should hold the style, His Royal Highness, HRH. Their spouse would automatically hold the title of Diang Diang, Princess of the First Degree. Adopted members of the Royal House of Sulu hold the style of His Highness, HH, whereas, their spouse would also hold the title of Diang Diang, Princess of the First Degree, and should hold the style, Her Highness according to traditional customs of Sulu. Datu Saja, which may be acquired through confirming the titles, Gulal, on the middleman of the Sultan. The gulal is made if a commoner has achieved outstanding feats or services in line of duty through display of bravery, heroism, etc. Datu Saja is life title of nobility and the title holders should hold the style, His Excellency. Whereas their spouses should hold the title of Diang and should hold the style, Her Excellency, the commoners or Maharlika are those who do not trace their descent from royalty. The Wakal Kesultan. S. Panglimas, Parkasa. S and Laksamans who are commoners hold responsible positions involving administrative matters. Wakal Kesultanan, region representative outside Royal Sulu Sultanate Panglima, region representative inside Royal Sulu Sultanate Parkasa, aide-de-camp of region representative inside Royal Sulu Sultanate Laksaman, sub-region representative inside Royal Sulu Sultanate males who hold offices above shall be addressed by the title of nobility Tuan. The title is directly attached to the office, followed by the rank of the office they hold, their given name, surname and region. The females who hold offices above shall be addressed by the title of nobility city. The title is directly attached to the office, followed by the rank of the office they hold, their given name, surname and region. Visual Arts the Sultanate of Sulu, along with the rest of Mindanao has a long tradition of decorative arts known as okir or yukul. Yukul being the Taosug word for wood carving or engraving, the Taosugs and Maranao's people have been carving and decorating their boats, houses and even grave markers with these yukul carvings. Aside from wood carving, yukul motifs have been found on various clothing in the Sulu archipelago. Yukul motifs tend to emphasize geometric patterns and a flowing design, with floral and leaf patterns as well as folk elements. The Taosugs also decorated their weapons with these motifs. Various kris and barong blades have finely decorated handles as well as blades covered in floral patterns and the like. 
Bronze lantaka also bear some eucal patterns. Pretenders After the death of Sultan Mahakuta A. Kiram, the Philippine national government failed to formally recognize a new sultan. Mahakuta S. Crown Prince Mujul Lail Kiram, the heir to the throne according to the line of succession as recognized by the Philippine governments from 1915 to 1986, was 20 years old upon his father's death. Due to his young age, he failed to claim the throne in a time of political instability in the Philippines that led to the peaceful revolution and subsequent removal of President Marcos. The gap in the Sultanate leadership was filled by crown claimants of rival branches. Therefore, the following sultans were not crowned with the support of the Philippine government nor received a formal recognition from the national government as their predecessors had until 1986. However, the Philippine national government decided to deal with one or more of these so-called sultan claimants regarding issues concerning the sultanate's affairs. Mujul Lail Tan Kiram claims that he is the legitimate successor as the 35th Sultan of Sulu based on the Memorandum Order 427 of 1974, in which former Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos recognized his father, Sultan Mahakuta A. Kiram, as the Sultan of Sulu. Under Rodrigo Duterte's administration, calls to finally settle the dispute of who is the officially recognized Sultan of Sulu via government recognition through an executive order was voiced out by various parties involved with the issue. The calls have yet to be dealt with by the government since 2017, along with a 2016 electoral promise to retake Eastern Sabah. Gallery A flag colored yellow was used in Sulu by the Chinese. See also Notes References Generaleng, Josiah C., Historical Timeline of the Royal Sultanate of Sulu including related events of neighboring peoples, Southeast Asian Studies, Northern Illinois University Campbell, Lawrence Dundas 2007, The Asiatic Annual Register, or, A View of the History of Hindustan, and of the Politics, Commerce and Literature of Asia, 6, University of Michigan Cavendish, Marshall 2007, World and Its Peoples, Eastern and Southern Asia, 9, Marshall Cavendish Corporation, ISBN 978-0-7614-7642-9 De Casa, George C. 1999, the Quranic Concept of Uma and Its Function in Philippine Muslim Society, Editrice Pontificia Universita Gregoriana, ISBN 978-88-7652-812-5 Gonda, Jan. 1975, Religionen, Handbuch der Orientalistik, Indonesian, Malaysia und die Philippinen unter Einschluss der Kapmalayan in Sudafrika 2, e.j. Brill, ISBN 978-90-04-04330-5 Ibrahim, Ahmad, Sharon Sadiq, Yasmin Hussain Readings on Islam in Southeast Asia, Institute of Southeast Asian Studies, ISBN 978-9971-988-08-1 Keppel, Henry, The Expedition to Borneo of HMS Didio for the Suppression of Piracy, reprinted by the Forgotten Books, ISBN 978-1-4400-7547-6 LaRousse, William, 2001, A Local Church Living for Dialogue, Muslim-Christian Relations in Mindanao Sulu, Philippines, 1965-2000, Editrice Pontificia Universita Gregoriana, ISBN 978-88-7652-879-8 Mahul, Cesar Adib, 1973, Muslims in the Philippines, University of the Philippines Press Salibi, Najib Mitri, 1908, The History of Sulu, Bureau of Printing Saunders, Graham E., 2002, A History of Brunei, Routledge, ISBN 978-0-7007-1698-2 
Scott, William Henry, 1994, Barangay, 16th Century Philippine Culture and Society, Ateneo de Manila University Press, ISBN 978-971-550-135-4 Tan, Samuel K., 2009, A History of the Philippines, University of the Philippines Press, ISBN 978-971-542-568-1 History for Brunei 2009. History for Brunei Darussalam, Sharing Our Past. Curriculum Development Department, Ministry of Education. ISBN 999172372-2. Tan, Samuel K. 2010, the Muslim South and Beyond, University of the Philippines Press, ISBN 978-971-542-632-9. United Nations Publications, 2002, Case Concerning Sovereignty over Palau Ligitan and Palau Sipitan, Indonesia, Malaysia. Judgment of 17 December 2002. International Court of Justice Series. Issue 858 of Recule des Arrets, Avis Consultatives et Ordonnances. Reports of Judgments, Advisory Opinions and Orders, United Nations Publications, ISBN 978-92-1-070964-4. External links The official website of Royal House of Sulu under the guidance of Sultan Mujol Lail Tan Kiram, 35th Sultan of Sulu line of succession of the Sultans of Sulu of the modern era as published in the official Gazette of the Republic of the Philippines Philippine Provincial Government of Sulu, the official list of Sultans Sultanate of Sulu on World Statesman. Org.